so welcome to another IPC community call. Yeah, so many people are probably in Paris and Nebular, but yeah, we, we have the regular agenda. Uh, first thing I wanted to mention is that uh, maybe some of you remember that two weeks ago we we have this proposal of uh, moving the core to a monthly cadence. Um, we discussed this again. Um, we decided to keep uh, bi-weekly, so we'll just continue doing the community call every two weeks. Uh, if at any point in time anybody would like to give us feedback about the you know the format or the content or the cadence of the call please feel free to reach to us uh, and we will try to improve all right then uh, let me sh i will post this also in zoom in case anybody wants to open it so we will start with the regular yeah updates we start from interchain team uh, Susanna is not uh, here today. She's also in Paris. So, uh, Adi, are you going to give the updates, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. So last week we we spent some time looking into like the amount of transaction fees, so like the gas costs that relays have paid. Um, we made like a dashboard out of that. You can you can click on the link to check it out. Um, yeah. So this is just to like see the amount of fees that relays have paid over the past two years since IBC launched. And we sort of wrote a blog post around that just to create like a story around, you know, the amount of fees that relays have paid and the fact that um, given that we're working on channel upgradability, uh, once that launches, then chains can upgrade their channels to use fee middleware. And like all of these fees can be uh, covered on chain. And other than those two things like this week, we're also looking into a host of other different data points. Again, you can click on that link there. Uh, so we're looking into things like the number of um, like ICS20 packets per chain, uh, ICA packets, ICQ, um, what, what is the latency of IBC channels, uh, what is the amount of gas per different IBC messages, and a bunch of different things. Uh, we're working on that this week, probably also next week. Um, yeah, uh, other than that, we we spent some time last week and the week before that talking to some of the new users of IBC just to understand what their pain points are with respect to wiring up IBC Go. Um, also to understand like what they feel about governance gated actions, like upgrading, uh, like giving um, like channel upgradability initialization or reviving expired clients. And also to understand their experience using interchain accounts. And yeah, we, we've also been doing some user research around um, some improvements that can be made to ICA as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's everything on the product side. Thanks, Adi. Um, any questions for Adi? All right, if not, uh, we can move to the updates for the protocol engineering. Um, yeah, we have um, yeah a few things uh, going on in parallel uh, at the moment. Um, working on the seven point three release. Um, yeah, the major feature remaining for that release is ADR eight, uh, and also the callbacks uh, middleware implementation for VMs. Um, Serdar, uh, do you want to give an update on that work? Yeah, for sure. So the ADR8 uh, implementation and the middleware is now under review. So we are doing some review sessions where we actually um, exactly identify the, uh, the the specs changes that we have made and we want to make a little bit more. But um, I think, uh, yeah, the middleware is ready, but we're just making sure that like um, the the code looks good the code is like um uh, i guess i guess beautiful and like it doesn't um affect other parts of the thing but yeah um i think uh the middleware is going to go through some internal security review and all that otherwise everything everything looks good for it um yeah so just internal security review and uh minor nits that's that's what's remaining cool yeah um, all right, so yeah, hopefully we can release this 
sometime in August. And so, yeah. All right, then another thing that's uh, also uh, moving, uh, although a bit slower than before, uh, because of the other things that we're working on, is uh, channel reliability work for V8. Uh, yeah, we've been implementing the, the upgrade handshake callbacks uh, in, in ICS20 and 29 free middleware. Uh, so that uh, once we have those callbacks implemented, we can we can write um, an integration test that uh, executes uh, all the steps in the handshake. Uh, hopefully, we will have this finished next week. Um, for V8, uh, we're also reviewing uh, and contributing to Jacob's Jacob's uh, PR uh, for upgrading to SDK 50. I think this is looking very promising. Uh, I think it's uh, the review, Colin has been doing a lot of work on the review and pushing also changes. Uh, um, and I think it's, he said this today that he's almost done and will probably merge the PR uh, to the feature branch uh, today, if not maybe tomorrow. And once that happens, uh, we will make a attack uh, something like call SDK upgrade even even alpha, um, so that that's available uh, for teams to integrate with to start integrating with. Um, we will also share with um, Strangelove um, so that um, they can also maybe start working on on bumping SDK in interchain test, which is something we will need uh, if we want to merge this to main, uh, because at the moment in the PR, the end-to-end -end tests are not uh, running. Well, we started it, it's by no means done. Um, and it's that, that might be something that uh, like we'll jump into over the next week as a team. Um, so far, all I've gotten to is, is like go mod tidy, you know, and uh, <laughs> logic. All right, all right, cool. But uh, very glad to hear that um, that's started. Yeah, cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's uh, on V eight. Then for Wasm clients, we're also uh, working working through the list of issues uh, that were opened after the internal review and Ethan Frey's audit. Um, also, Composable is uh, updating, starting to update the, the contracts uh, because some of the changes require also uh, updates on, on the contract side. Um, yeah, so continuing with that, uh, starting to write documentation and hopefully, uh, yeah, maybe in the next iteration, we can start doing like um, more integration work uh, with the contracts uh, to start testing everything end to end. Yeah, and I think that's that's it for Wasm clients. Uh, then on the spec side, uh, yeah, Aditya was working was working on on some changes that um, uh, were required for uh, in the channel upgradeability spec. Um, yeah, and these changes are needed to be able to support uh, governance initiated upgrades. The PR is there. Uh, yesterday we went through through the changes uh, at a high level. Uh, the team is gonna review. Uh, so hopefully we can start working on on this uh, on implementing these changes in IBC Go uh, in approximately a couple of weeks. Um, oh, I see. Sorry, comment from Jacob. Okay, contracts living in IBC Go repo. Yeah, so basically, like, um, I'll explain. In Juno, there were a couple of contracts that we had privileged and baked into the chain. They, for a very long time, lived in another repository. And what this actually created was a really difficult situation. If you wanted to follow the tests, right, like follow their flow, it was hard to do so. And Here's, at least, I mean, I, I don't know how uh, Wasm client deployment will move, but certainly we've already got one, you know, the, the grandpa contract uh, for composable slash Centauri. 
what I'd like to do, if it's all right with everybody here, I'll actually I'll ask their team if we can take the latest version of that contract, put it in the repository, add it to the test system. And reason being that that way um, we can get it plugged into CI, which we could do without putting the contract in the repository, of course, but we can get it plugged into CI. And also the source is there to check. And I think that's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do have the, the contracts uh, in IBC Go, but they are, yeah, they are the, um, the compiled uh, Wasm bytecode and not, not the source code. Uh, so, would... so that's exactly the thing. Yeah, I'd love to put the source in the repository if it's all right with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can maybe we can discuss with Composable, and, and we can also discuss internally because, uh, yeah, the um, the the custom wasm uh, contracts is a bit uh, out of our expertise. So, uh, yeah, moving forward, maintaining those contracts. Uh, could I be... don't. Yeah. Here's my suggestion. Mm -hmm. We explicitly state that the IBC Go team does not maintain the contracts mm -hmm. that. Like, so in the case of the one for composable, composable maintains them and that they're there for testing and visibility. Uh, I, I don't think so, Puneet. Um, basically, I'll tell you why. Why not get submodule? Well, in my experience, it just adds a lot of complexity. Um, I, I have worked with chains that used Git submodule pretty extensively in the past. And actually, the, the trouble with it is that beginners at that point can't really properly clone the repository. Um, and, and so my, my thought is, like, I, I can also talk with Composable, or if you guys like, I, I can even add them to our Slack channel, the one that we share. And, you know, basically, my thought is the contract code, when it gets updated in their repositories, just update it in IBC as well, so that the tests are more observable. There might be other solutions too, though. You know, this is just a first brush. Yeah. Yeah, if we can find a solution in which, I mean, uh, like the, the master source code is in Composable Centauri repository and, and we just have a copy, uh, that would be great. So that's, you know, still the, the main place for maintenance is Centauri. Uh, I think that would be probably our preferred solution. Um, but yeah, we can maybe we can discuss and see what options we have. Sounds good to me. Um, I'll, I'll bring, um, just, you know, I hate to have the binaries in the repo is really the thing. You can't really do anything with them. Yeah, yeah. All right. I will make a note and we can... We can discuss, but, but I think yeah, this certainly needs like more internal discussion yeah. because we are just gonna add these for test drive, so we are not like modifying the code or anything. So, in in a case like this, it might also j make sense to just have the binary as well. I'm just, I'm not saying like it just needs discussion, you know. Maybe eventually there's gonna be an issue on IBC Go people can discuss, but uh, uh, yeah. Git Git sub module is also acceptable. That's also another option. Uh, if if there's no maintenance, you know, you don't want to copy paste code generally. So you, but but yeah, needs a discussion. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Thanks for uh, raising the the point. Yeah. The... All right. Uh, yeah. So that was then for wasm clients and the about the specs for general readability and yeah, that's a bit uh, the updates currently. Still trying to, yeah, push forward all these things more or less in parallel. Um, yeah, any any other questions or comments? All right. If not, uh, we can hear some updates from Hermes teams from the Hermes team. If Luca is here. Hey, uh, so we released uh, Hermes 1.6.0. Uh, here are the change log. Uh, the two main features being well the, the option to avoid scanning all channels, which I mentioned two weeks ago, and 
also uh, pull based uh, relaying. So uh, querying, periodically querying the block result instead of, of getting the events by web, web socket. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so there's now the choice to, to relay with one or the other. Um, and uh, we managed to do a complete handshake of the channel upgradability. Cool. Uh, but uh, from the update, uh, the since the specs will be reworked, I think this will will halt the, the implementation at the, uh, at the moment just to confirm if there's like major changes that will need to be done on our side before resuming the uh, the PR. Yeah, cool. Great. Um, thank you, Luca. Yeah. Uh, then from the Golang Relayer team, any updates? Yeah, I can take this. I'm Dan over at Strange Love. <laughs> um, we have, I, I think last week, we probably talked about having a 2.4 release candidate. We haven't yet. Uh, we're getting through a backlog of PRs around. We want to include fee grant in this release candidate. Um, this should help with if you're relaying on multiple paths for the same chain, you can sometimes hit sequence errors. And so integrating fee grant in the relayer should help with this. Um, so that should be part of the 2.4 release along with uh, local host support. Um, we've done some relaying improvements for Penumbra, which is still a work in progress, I believe. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we're exporting a bunch more metrics for Prometheus. Uh, so if your relayer wallets are getting low or um, clients are close to expiring, um, you can hook in these exported metrics to your Prometheus logs. Um, and then some minor improvements around handling uh, packet ordering. Um, this one we just did the other day, I think it, with this one, we saw really big improvements around clearing out specifically strides, um, ICS path. We were getting, we were able to batch up to like a hundred acknowledgements in one message. So, um, yeah, hopefully this 2.4 release should be out by end of this week. I know we said that last week, but, um, we're, we're pushing for this week. Cool. Great. Uh... Do you mind uh, uh, just just to share um, just just to ping us in the in the share channel uh, when you when you uh, tag it? Uh, yeah, this is sorry. Remind what is is it on, is it a Slack yeah, channel? Yeah, in the in the IBC Strange Love channel. Oh, yep, I got it. Yep, uh, just, for sure. just, uh, so that uh, uh, we also update uh, our our end to end tests. Uh, yeah, we were. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Cool. Uh, all right. Then any other updates or topics that people would like to talk about? Um, if nothing else, I guess we uh, has everyone heard of the like packet forward middleware and IBC hooks, uh, like the interaction, the vulnerability interaction, just to make sure there's no yeah. chains that are affected by that. Like, yeah, ju just if you haven't heard, just you know, and you're using like either, just ju just so that uh, you are careful. What uh, I, I actually do have a question. I, I reviewed the document that confirmed that there was an issue. Agree, there's an issue. Um, but I, but I have a question for everybody, very much everybody. What are what's the best way to suggest to keep safe? Is it? I, I've heard different versions of this. Okay, one of the versions of this is like, don't trust Chain B which honestly, I've, I've always wondered about that. 
another version of this is don't write any contract that can authorize from that info sender field. And I just wanted to get others' opinion on this. Well, other people can also give their opinion. My personal feeling is that both are valid. Like we probably should do both of them. Um, I think the message info field and contracts should be reserved for something that's explicitly signed by the sender. And IBC packets are never signed explicitly by any kind of sender. So I think you should never send any IBC packet as a sender to a contract. Because I think that field should be reserved for a signature verif verified sender. Um, second, yeah, I think PFM can also like, uh, yeah, like it's, it's more like a design improvement, I guess you could like, um, instead of using like any any kind of address, when you're like in the middle chain, you can use either a module address. So PFM can have its own address, like every module has, or you can uh, like just uh, like Osmosis suggested that like you can assign a uh, temporary, like not uh, like address based on the original sender and the channel ID. So this way the uh, the new address is unique to the uh, sender, but it's like, um, it's not like you can't impersonate someone else in the sender field of transfer. I think you should probably do both of these things, just uh, if if nothing else for design improvement. Yeah. Is but, there a uh, link cool. for the issue? Um, yeah, it's in the IBC apps repo. It's a really good discussion, actually. Yeah, uh, there is a report, but I don't know. This one here? No. Oh yeah, the, the, ah, this is the the report, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so this would be something that describes the problem here. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a fix in PFM or any any change uh, planned to be implemented in PFM? From what I was told, this is mostly in IBC hooks. Um, my someone from my team has a lot more insight on this than than we do, but I think we have a meeting with someone around IBC hooks to start tackling this. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I think um, I thought more about it initially. I was kind of on the side of yeah, it feels like a PFM issue, but after thinking more about it, like it's also probably more of IBC hooks issue. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think both of them can use the uh, design improvement. Uh, like you know, you don't need to be allow, allow like PFM doesn't need to allow it to have like uh, any sender in the middle, but but yeah, you also shouldn't pass info sender to contracts like IBC hooks does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm. Any any other topics? Secret is adopting IBC hooks, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they are they are fixing the vulnerability by not passing it uh, the sender. They're just passing empty like null string. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else about this topic or any other topic? If not, uh, yeah, we can wrap up. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, then see you in two weeks. And for those who are maybe having some holidays in the in the next uh, weeks, uh, yeah, enjoy your holidays. Thank you. Have a great day.
Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.